Thank you so much, Rebecca. Um, I, I have to say, I'm so grateful that I got to come after everybody else because to hear those stories really makes it personal as to why we need to care and advocate for the human rights of immigrants everywhere. Um, I wanted to share you this with everybody. This was me <laughs> when I was a little girl. And I remember going and getting this, you know, finally becoming a citizen. And as a little kid, I walked up there and I was so intimidated because the judge seemed really high and I was this little kid looking up. And he, I remember this big booming voice going, do you want to be an American, my child? And I remember being a little kid and going, will I still be brown? <laughs> so I, in my mind, I thought that being an American meant that I would suddenly turn blonde and blue eyed like my dad or whatever. And I remember the, the judge saying, in America, every, anyone can be an American. And that really struck with me. And I remember walking out of that place and being old enough to tell the difference between a sense of hope, you know, seeing all these people waiting and obviously hoping so badly. And this Neil Diamond song my parents played as we drove away was, you know, they're coming to America. And that song just stuck in my head ever since then. And, you know, when I look out today and I see the stories of young children you know, in cages, and I see the most recent thing about women being forced to have hysterectomies against their will, and I hear the stories of immigrants in cages being sprayed with, you know, substances that are burning their skin, and I work with Bill Holston, I realize that the difference between me getting to hold one of these trophies and ha is having the opportunity to prove myself and prove my life. And so what I would encourage anyone watching this as any of the recipients, any of us who've been able to achieve these things, you know, just looking at my own life, I was able to be able to speak correctly because I've had training with my hearing loss. I've been able to speak at TED Talks, the White House, House of Lords, different places, because I had access to somebody who would put on rubber gloves and shake my tongue and tell me the difference between crayon and crayon crown. And today, as you can see, I still have trouble. But the difference between being able to articulate and speak and have the education allowed me to do that, it all came because I had access to opportunity. And because of my parents, my mom's watching right now, Deborah Thompson, and it was her idea to adopt me. And I want to thank you, mom, and wherever my dad is in heaven, I want to thank him because those opportunities made the difference for someone like me to be able to find the man that I marry, Joshua Frank, to be able to do the work that we do. We now, with Food Source DFW, are feeding 5,000 families a week in DFW alone. Um, right now, we have our Mass for Life organization. We just gave masks out to five different Native American tribes out in Santa Fe. As we speak, more masks are being given to the Huna in Hawaii, to the Teano in Puerto Rico. And of course, I remember where I came from, Mexico, we have masks being sent to the Tolteca and Teotihuacan, and masks being sent to the Maya and the Yucatan. And we're working all over, and we've sent masks to Alaska, up to Manhattan, um, all over the United States, and we're working to try and help get them down to the Amazon as well. Because all of us that are immigrants in this country, one thing that we can testify to is understanding that the world is now globalized. How we interact and connect with each other is so intimate on the economic level, on the sociological level, and on the environmental level. And immigrants, we have the opportunity to really be human bridges at this time when the sociopolitical climate is so divisive. We can take advantage of our opportunity to be the one in the room to say, I hear where you're coming from. I may look like this, but I also live this way. I may be part of this culture and this environment, but I also came from there we can put a human face on the demographics and the data people are hearing. And so I wanna encourage everybody, you know, be an advocate by virtue of just owning who you are and know that the greatest opportunity to be able to have an impact in the dialogue that's going on is your own success and then reaching out with that success and helping somebody else become successful. As we open doors, we think of advocates as marching and shouting and all that's important too, but advocating is investing in a way that lifts somebody else up financially and emotionally. Advocating is being able to open the doors for somebody else and say, you can make it too. Advocating is being when you have success, articulating, speaking up in those social environments, which can sometimes be awkward and saying, if you like what I've done with my life, if you think that my life has value and has contributed to our society, then look at me as proof of the potential of every single immigrant that's raiding in a cage there today. Because we have to be able to take 
uh, down the wall of difference that people put between those that look like us that are walking around in a privileged way with the education and the nice clothes and those that are waiting in a cage that are, have to be so intelligent and so passionate and so unrelenting just to survive. You take the you take the attitude of survivor and intelligence it takes to survive and you give them the opportunities we have and you will get many more people worthy of receiving these trophies. So that's what I'd love to impart to everybody. And again, I'm so humbled because I was a very little kid when I was brought over here and given the opportunity to become a citizen. And I love this country. I won't lie in this environment. I have to be open and honest. I'm really scared of what's happening in this country. It is scary to be asked to show my papers when I walk over to my mother's house. It is scary to know that I have a responsibility to speak up because I can't be fired for speaking up. But all of you that are in a privileged environment where you don't have to fear that, please speak up for those that can't speak up because there are a lot of people that need us right now to have that voice. So I love all of you. I love this country so much. And I encourage every one of you to keep doing what you're doing because your success is helping those of us that are advocating for human rights to have an even stronger voice. So thank you.